Hey everyone, Anarch here. So this is another installment in Anarch Abridged. Um, this video is going to be on the subject of platformism and especifismo. Uh, I also want to encourage you to go over to my Patreon and become a patron. I would really like to devote even more full-time efforts to this channel and you becoming a patron is what allows me to do that. So I really appreciate all of you that have already become patrons and uh, yeah, just go on over there. The link will be in the description. So the reason why I've titled this video uh, with both the labels platformism and especifismo is that these are very closely related to one another. Uh, Platformism actually arose as the theoretical conclusion that Nestor Machno came to after his experiences in the free territories of Ukraine. And uh, it was essentially the response to being betrayed by the Bolsheviks, uh, which Machno identified as being one of the key reasons why everything had gone wrong in the free territories. So what plant platformism was, was a very organizational tendency. That is to say, it has a heavy emphasis on organization building. And it is a, um, uh, it's a tendency based around creating a specifically anarchist organization. So this specifically anarchist organization has a platform and the, the platform is trying to group people of ideological tendency. Uh, it is trying to therefore prevent the organization from being co-opted by authoritarians or betrayed by authoritarians because the entity is built not to cooperate with authoritarian elements. Uh, it is very, it is a very organizational trend insofar as that it recognizes the importance of organization. So it is not only based in the thought of Nestor Machno, but it is often very inspired by thinkers like Enrico Malatesta or Bakunin. And uh, these were sort of developed in platformism. Nestor Machno was in active communication with Malatesta about uh, the, uh, the theory of platformism when it was being created. And it's interesting because you can go find uh, letters between the two where they are essentially disputing uh, platformism as a praxis, uh, trying to understand where it belongs within the anarchist milieu. And uh, uh, Malatesta at first sort of critiques it for perhaps being too, uh, uh, too organizational, being too focused around the organization itself. And through extensive contact between the two of them, they essentially just realized they agreed on the subject. Uh, and that is not a shocker, given that a lot of literature that has been written since then uh, uh, on the subject of platformism and, uh, and the theory of platformism has uh, uh, cited Malatesta. So what is especifismo? Well, especifismo is a development of platformism. It essentially uh, maintains those elements of having a strong, specifically anarchist organization, but it also introduces a bunch of new theoretical tools. It also introduces new pra praxis, uh, new methods for the praxis to be carried out. So platformism was often very focused on sort of conventional methods, uh, such as the union uh, or building like revolutionary trade unions, for example. Uh, it, had, it, it had a heavy overlap with like anarcho-syndicalism as both a method and a body of theory. And uh, Especifismo essentially said, okay, that's really important, but we would like to be able to build different kinds of structures. Uh, we think that the union may have been over overutilized. Um, uh, the other aspect of it is that it utilizes something called social insertion. So uh, the idea is basically that the fear of platformism is because you've created a specifically anarchist organization and because anarchists are not going to probably be the majority in society, essentially what you've created is a relatively small organization uh, that's only going to generally contain people who are already ideologically committed anarchists, which uh, runs the risk of essentially reproducing the errors of vanguardism. 
the reason why it doesn't really function like a Vanguard is because the organization itself is in constant contact with all of these elements of the social movement. And Especifismo really emphasizes that. This concept of social insertion is essentially uh, a very broad way of saying that you should be present in other organizations, especially those of the mass movement or social movements as they take place. You should intervene in the struggles of people that are already struggling, even if they're not all the way there, even if they are not uh, on necessarily on your track, uh, that they are not anarchists. However, uh, it emphasizes that you will find anarchist currents in almost all of these social movements. Uh, those anarchist currents should be emphasized and brought out. And at the same time, you should try to work with the other elements to bring them closer to anarchism. But really more than anything, you should be asking how you can assist them. You should be trying to provide your resources and skills, recognizing there's probably gonna be some conflict with your skills. Uh, and with your viewpoint. Uh, you need to offer yourself up as an asset, not as a controller or somebody who's trying to take the, the steering wheel and yank it in a certain direction. That is not your place in social insertion. You should instead be present and uh, an asset to them, that you should, you should be offering your skills to them as best as possible in order to make the movement more successful, to bring more people to it, and to see its tactics succeed. So, uh, a little background on Especifismo is that it comes from a Brazilian group, uh, which I pronounce Farj, uh, F-A-R-J. And uh, F-A-R-J, essentially, uh, they didn't create Especifismo, but they're the people who gave us most of the theory that, that people are reading today. It began with the F-A-U, which is, a, which is a, an earlier formation and was uh, more, even more explicitly a development of platformism. So it essentially functions down there uh, uh, in Brazil uh, through the FARJ, but it is now permeating all over the place. Uh, people are reading about Especifismo. They are, are also coming to these conclusions from their own contexts, recognizing how this will be necessary. So let me talk a little bit about my viewpoints on Especifismo more broadly. Hopefully I've laid in enough foundation for you to kind of know what it, what it means when I talk about either platformism or Especifismo. I uh, consider myself an Especifist, per particularly because what happened is that I became an organizer. I became active uh, organizing and uh, I, I got my start back in Occupy. So, you know, 2011, 2012 kind of time frame. And I've been organizing ever since then. I won't belabor all of the details of that, perhaps in a different video. But as I did, I essentially came to the conclusions of Especifismo. Uh, what I discovered was that authoritarian leftists and anarchists or libertarian socialists uh, don't really get along. They work at cross purposes to one another. Uh, they do a lot of damage to the effectiveness of one another's strategies and, and tactics even. And this can be quite disastrous uh, for the reasons that platformism lays out. I had also sort of organically discovered the importance of social insertion. I literally was just naturally doing it when I learned about it. It was what I was all, it was sort of like, when I was just feeling out, you know, what was necessary in order to be a good organizer, I essentially just learned that social insertion is what worked. Going to other organizations' meetings, uh, sitting in, not talking over anybody, not telling anybody what to do, especially not like in the true larger course of their organization. Uh, instead, when they said they needed something, when there was uh, some unsolved problem that was taking place, being present to offer uh, uh, solutions, to offer solutions as best as you thought possible without trying to kind of, as I said earlier, like yank the steering wheel out of their hands. Instead, more providing tools, placing tools on the table, explaining to them why the tools work and so on. That was exactly what I had found was uh, successful. It built bonds between groups, it built trust. Uh, and it, I also found it was just the most helpful thing to do. 
Uh, it avoids all of these risks of entryism. It, it avoids the risk of, of you trying to become their leader or trying to, you know, uh, co-opt their, their group. And they're going to be less afraid that you're trying to co-opt their group because you're not. <laughs> you're just there to help. You really are genuinely just there to help. And when the time comes where perhaps you have a conversation about uh, why you're there, why you're providing these skills, you, then you mention, I'm an anarchist. Uh, you know, this is part of uh, both my, my worldview and my praxis. Like being here is, is important to me because what you are doing matters. This is actually unified with the struggle that I am struggling in. And that can be a very powerful statement. That, that, that statement can build a lot of solidarity very quickly. Um, it also really does empower the movement. Uh, you really are making people more powerful. You are helping uh, the different aspects of the social movement uh, uh, gain leverage over uh, the, the hi uh, hierarchical power structure. Now, it should be said, there are better and worse places to socially insert. Uh, I would say do not socially insert in authoritarian uh, organizations. Uh, do not socially insert in fascist organizations. Do not socially insert in organizations that are working at exact cross purposes from you. But you might find that even though there's a bunch of organizations that aren't really working in the direction you think is best, they aren't like stepping on your toes. They aren't doing damage necessarily to the movement. Um, maybe a little bit of damage from incompetence from time to time, but they aren't actively trying to undermine you. Uh, those are really good places to do social insertion. Those are going to differ depending on your context. I couldn't even tell you particular organizations because that's going to differ based on where you are. Um, but yeah, so socially inserting in these places, find the places that are most radical first. Go to other organizations that are most radical around you first. Don't don't go out and, and choose, uh, you know, some random liberal organization, which is kind of, you know, uh, a misery to, to have to be involved in. Instead, choose choose the ones that are closest to you first and make good connections with them. And, and might I add, just remember, you're not there to recruit. You're not there to recruit. You're not trying to pull people into your group. And because if you do, they're going to start to become distrustful of you for good reason. When somebody does that in the organizations I'm in, I'm always a little distrustful of them. I always wonder why they're actually there. I start to think maybe they have ulterior, ulterior motives or something. So all of this is to say that social insertion actually models not building power leverage when you go into other people's spaces. It emphasizes the importance of being present in popular organizations and being present in the social struggle more broadly. Uh, continually ex uh, exploring that social struggle in all of its fronts. Okay, so this is kind of broadly uh, uh, the conclusions I came to over time that led me to Especifismo. And then what I found was they were actually developing a lot of things that made a lot of sense to me, but they were not conclusions I had come to yet. They were not things that I had really thought through deeply. Now, their broader kind of anarchist theory is actually super in line with the things that I already thought, and they often have very good analyses. Uh, it's very modern. It's some of the most modern anarchist theory you're going you're gonna to find. So they often use language which may feel a little more familiar to our era. Um, what I really mean is more their praxis. They're developing a lot of really important praxis. Um, one example I'll give is they have this uh, multi-front strategy. So what they've really tried to do is figure out broadly what are the fronts that they should be trying to um, uh, develop connections with. Uh, the fronts they came up with were the rural front, the student front, and the labor front. Uh, I, we have actually been trying to apply this in Scissor Tail, and we found that we think it's appropriate to have many more fronts than that. Uh, and we are trying to uh, develop the means of communicating with them as well, because we think that's very important. This also brings us around to uh, one of the, or the, what you might call just the third sort of foundational component of a specifismo, and that is that 
the organization, the specifically anarchist organization, should view itself as a, a space for the development of theory and further development of praxis. So it should be not just viewing itself as a passive consumer of theory, a passive consumer of uh, other people's actions and words, but instead a producer of those things. People should be thinking on theory, discussing it, um, uh, holding reading groups inside where people uh, read particular texts and, and uh, try to develop their own formulations of them. Uh, this, this leads to education being a very important component of a specifismo, but, but not only internally, externally. Because you're not only developing the theory for yourself, you know, I mean, that might be said to have its own limited utility. You're also trying to create it so that it can be spread to others, so that they can learn about the things you're discussing, the things that you're developing, uh, so that it becomes reproducible. It can be handed off to other people elsewhere. So what that means is not only is it a theoretically unified organization, it's trying to become more theoretically unified. It's trying to uh, 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 develop even a more robust theoretical conception of how everything works. Um, I don't want you to take away the wrong idea. It's not to say that we want there to be a, a pure unity of thought or anything, uh, because not only is that not achievable, it's not necessarily desirable. It is to say that we're all on the same page. We at least understand where we are settled in, in, on a bunch of these issues, and they are still within the scope of the platform of the organization. And so, yeah, what that means is that uh, education, uh, popular education especially, is very important in a specifismo. Because here's the thing, what you may notice is that it's because it's very engaged with the social movement, it also considers broad or mass movements to be very important to the process. Uh, this is not like something where we just kind of like set off to the side and, and we're just waiting for the new thing to co-opt, but instead that we understand this is like an outpouring of the masses who we are trying to empower. We are trying to give them power. We should be trying to develop those, those structures and methods which give them power. And so this takes very seriously that task. Um, you should think a lot about how uh, a specifismo is sort of correcting the possible flaw at the core, which could make this a tiny group of anarchists away from everybody else in society, and instead encourage us to be, uh, to be active in the struggles of our time. So I think this pretty well lays out uh, my major thoughts on Especifismo. There's probably a ton of other details I could give. Um, uh, one, one more perhaps, uh, perhaps I would elaborate just a little bit on the importance of the platform organization. I think what you'll find is that a platform organization is not going to make it, uh, it's not going to create conflict, it's going to reduce conflict. The people that are in the group agree with each other. It's just gonna become a lot easier to make decisions together, to plan together. Um, you're not gonna be stepping on each other's toes all the time. You're gonna find that the people come into the organization with similar expectations, and under those similar expectations are able to come to a common conclusion through consensus, through just discussion, without without having to uh, you know engage in, in uh, uh, all these arguments and disagreements. Uh, that's because everybody who comes in agreed to the platform. They're, they're here because they already kind of have a, 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 an agreement on a particular revolutionary perspective. Uh, and I think another thing is some people are oft, oft, also very uh, often concerned that a platform organization won't, won't grow fast enough. Uh, that it, because it only lets in people who are ideologically aligned, it, it, it necessarily lessens the number of people it can recruit, both how fast and how many. I want to say that one of those is true and the other one is not. It does limit the number of people you can recruit. Absolutely true. Uh, ultimately, it's probably not wise to expect that at any point the entire mass of people will be in the specifically anarchist organization maybe even not even a necessarily a large portion of the population, even though that would be desirable. Uh, the more people that are in the specifically anarchist organization that follow the platform and carry out the, the, the tasks of the organization, the better. 
but I think what you'll find is that the organization actually grows at a roughly similar rate to more, even more big tent organizations. At least that's been my experience. In fact, at this point, I think Cooperation Tulsa is the largest organization, member organization that I've been part of since I started organizing like a decade ago. And it is a platform organization. You can't join Cooperation Tulsa unless you agree to its points of unity. And its points of unity are, you know, social ecologist and communalist points of unity, which are broadly very anarchist. Uh, you know, essentially anybody who joins is pretty, pretty well and at least an anarchist by implication. They don't even maybe necessarily know it, but if they agree to those points of unity, they've essentially just agreed to a sort of like eco anarchism. And yet the organization grows relatively fast. Uh, it grows faster than once again, other organizations that I've been part of. So I think what one has to take into consideration is that we're not even close to saturation for the radical population at this point. Therefore, we might actually have pretty steady growth, even just getting the people who agree with us together. Um, one way I want you to think of this is that this organization is a catalyst. You're trying to gather together as much of that catalyst as possible. You're trying to get um, uh, all the people who already can agree to a specifically anarchist platform that is, that is radical, that is revolutionary together and get them to act on the task at hand in order to catalyze transformation. And because you're interacting with the social movement, you should be in the process of trying to um, act as a, cata a, a, a catalyst does in chemistry and to catalyze a reaction, to move people towards anarchism, both through education and through action, through every means that are available to the specifically anarchist organization. So I think when you uh, learn to see things in this way, I think when you begin to utilize a specifismo, you begin to recognize that it has a very solid toolkit. And it's a toolkit that very well matches the one that I had already discovered organically through just being an organizer. And they have pretty well just expanded uh, that toolkit uh, that I had in hand uh, showed me many ways to use it that I was not immediately aware of. So sometimes you might uh, hear me call it the most modern uh, revolutionary praxis. Um, I think perhaps you more appropriately would be said to be the most modern uh, uh, revolutionary method for organization building and, and interaction with social movements. Uh, but yes, yes, I'm very inspired by specifismo. Uh, I, I highly advocate uh, building platform organizations, and uh, I would invite you to go read more about Especifismo. Um, I'll put some links to some uh, key materials that are involved in Especifismo, and probably also some about platformism. Um, there'll be kind of like varying ranges of uh, introduction to deeper theory. And uh, I hope any of you who are interested in building a specifically anarchist organization or even just broadly any kind of platform organization, uh, go look at those links as I provide them there and really start diving in. Um, yeah, because I, I recommend it very highly as a method. Um, last thing I want to do is remind you to go become a patron on my Patreon. Um, once again, I really want to make this a, a, a more full-time gig. Uh, uh, I'm trying to continue producing in between those longer videos. Uh, and uh, I hope this series is uh, what y'all were looking for because you kept asking for, so, for some content in between. Uh, and uh, here it is. So I'll talk to y'all next time.